Hola, mi gente, como estas? How you doing? I've been trying to record this video for 9,272 hours, okay? It just does not work out for me, or I don't like it, or something. So, yikes. So, I'm trying right now. And whatever happens in this video, this is just the cut that's going out, okay? Uh, and I actually have a backup battery right now. I just charged it. So, uh, let me think of my size. How you doing? How you living? Mm, girl. Um, so, the, today, I'm just chilling. It's Sunday, so it would technically be like a reset day. But I don't like resetting on my days off. And so I clean in between work a lot of the times. Um, I do a lot of making my bed and all that shit during work. Um, cause I don't like wasting my time off. But today I did get some stuff for Hennessy, and Hennessy ate five worms. If you guys know Hennessy, he's a very picky eater. It's our turtle. He's a very picky eater, and he doesn't really eat a lot. His metabolism is a mad slow. But today, man, he we he was pushing us to the limit. So I put. Um, I got a ceramic, um, tile that I can place inside of his, um, housing unit so that the sun will hit that and warm it up because, you know, I don't think the dirt was getting warmed up. He didn't really have a basking place. And then I put some of the stuff we had around the house in there until I can figure out what kind of decor I want him to have. And so he ate like five worms and then we got this box turtle food which I, we haven't opened it we got it around Christmas and we never opened it found out it was like a gelatinous goo of fruits and vegetables he tore that up so I'm really happy I gotta go clean off his tiles because it's gonna trigger me about three different tiles so there's one that was really really small I didn't realize it was in inches and so we use that as a food plate. I got one that was square. I didn't like it for the cage. So um, we're going to figure out what that part is going to be for. It's also a nice tile to rip up my house and put in. So kind of, you know, I've been trying to play around with what tiles I want to put in the living room. So maybe that might be the one. Um, and then I got a white hexagon um, one. And that's the one we put in there. So yeah, he ate a lot. Um, I'm just gonna tell you guys, I feel like this is my season of growth, and this is to really check, like, if I'm really learning the lessons that I need to learn, and so yesterday, it actually has been happening over a week, maybe, I met this guy, he's a DJ, very cool at times, um, but I noticed some things about him that were kind of... He was, I don't know what it is, honestly. Maybe he was triggering me. I don't know. So, yesterday, the day before, I talked to Kimana about it. And I'm like, hey, this is a situation. What do you think? And she's like, well, I can see where he's coming from on it. So, what the situation was, was we were supposed to um, speak on the phone. I went to the dentist that night. Uh, and I didn't end up, was that that night? No, it was the night either after or before the dentist. Anyways, we, he ended up talking to his mom on the phone. I don't have a problem with that. I love people that have a really close relationship with their mom, as long as it's not weird, where it's, it makes me feel uncomfortable, like I'm third wheeling it, because that was a mad uncomfortable feeling. It, I was all cool with the situation, and I was like, oh, okay, no worries, I'm not worried about it, because to be quite honest, I didn't want to talk on the phone. I really hate doing it. I don't even talk on the phone all day at my job anymore. Like, I switch positions. I'm in investigations now. I do a lot more researching things than I do, um, um, fucking calling on the phone. I make calls to investigate things, but it's not an all-day thing. So, I'm not even on the phone all day at work anymore. So, um... He tells me that and he said his game is gonna be on coming on something like that and i was like no worries don't worry about it i hope you guys win and then that's all i left it at and this is the tone in my head what it sounds like he's like oh so you're mad and so i feel like there's just some kind of trauma somewhere that he had where he just automatically thought i'm mad but i get it because i have that same type of trauma you know 
so I explained it to my daughter and I'm like yo this is what happened she's like I can kind of see where he's coming from so I'm giving him another chance and being cool yesterday I'm with Kimana all day we're binge watching you guys gotta watch it if you haven't watched it I know I'm late I'm always late but the curious case of Natalie Grace you guys have to watch it. that shit is like so fucking interesting I love my freaking HBO Max I love that thing anyways so we was watching that and I wasn't on my phone because I was wow, I'm trying to figure out what was going on and then I did notice at some point when I did finally check my phone that he had called me a few hours earlier but I still wasn't calling because I wanted to finish this motherfucking series we sat here for like six hours <laughs> Um, so I was like, yo, I'm sorry about that. Cause he's like, I've been trying to call you all day. I was like, yo, I'm sorry. I've been binge watching the show. You know, I'll give you a call. Um, he was like, so you were ignoring me. And I was like, I was watching a show. It has nothing to do with how I was feeling about you. He's like, I called you and you went straight to voicemail. And I'm like, about to, I typed out this whole explanation and everything. And then I deleted it. Um, and I just said, stop it, lol. And then he was like, no, I see, I'm blocked. And I was like, okay, that was my last straw. And I was just like, um, so I don't do well with all this back and forth. Um, uh, and assumptions, I don't like that stuff. Like, that's not me, I'm not gonna assume anything about you. He's nice trying to get to know you and love it at that. He was like, okay, so goodbye. And I was like, I didn't say anything after that. I'm usually a last word type of person, but I realize how much energy it puts into that. And that would warrant me going back and forth when I already made my point that I'm not gonna be talking to them anymore. So what more do I have to say after that? I realize like I had been kind of like nurtured in such a way that I always need to respond and explain myself right because my mom I, she would yell at me and scream at me and then I'd be like but I have to explain everything every every everything because you don't get it and then when I got with my ex the same thing because I remember one time we had just started talking something happened with my nipple ring I believe it was the side too <laughs> and I'll get to you back on this nipple over here because she's gone through this breast has gone through it anyways and I believe it was you know something that happened with my nipple ring and I was heading up to the piercer to get it either replaced or something like that I just needed something done with my nipple ring they were fresh I remember because the night I met him I had just got him pierced the day before but we met at like midnight ish nighttime so it's like not even 24 hours they had been pierced and then out oh, something happened I need to go back up there and back then it's pagers right so he's paging, 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 911, 911, 911, 911, 911, and I'm getting anxiety. <laughs> like, what's happening? What's happening? And I finally get off the bus and I call him from the payphone. And he, by then, he's screaming, yelling, cussing, all this stuff. There's voicemails, screaming, yelling, cussing, everything. And this happened a lot for me. So I'm like, no, no, I was, I'm on my way. I was on my way to this and that. I'll meet you. It was crazy like I was in a panic and I was made for him to to mentally torment because I fell so in line with it I fell so in line with it like it was a perfect puzzle piece I fell so in line with it this went on with my like almost all my life till I really stopped interacting with anyone going out anywhere and I was just at home um, but he did like still do stuff like that because I would give voicemails yelling screaming cursing He would do it while he was on deployment yelling screaming cursing I was everything had his mom call me and like it was it was a met the way I was tormented by him and <laughs> It was it was a lot. It was a lot in that moment where I was about to explain myself I thought about all the times I over explained myself old habits die hard remember I was raised to do that I was in a relationship where I had to do that for 20 years and um, so I was about to go into that mode again but 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 and then I was like nah 
I'm not about to do all that. Like, that doesn't make sense. Why am I explaining myself? For what reason? There are times and places where it's warranted where you do explain, like, you know, and I don't have a problem. Like I told him before, I don't have a problem admitting where I'm wrong. I do not have a problem with that. But I'm also not going to be tormented again. That is just not in me to allow somebody to get me riled up to the point of anxiety again, scared and fear of missing a phone call, missing a text, missing anything, a beep. Like I'm not going down that road ever again in my life where it just feels that way. Um, I will fall asleep now, I don't care. Like it's just, that's just life right now. You know, like I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do but I'm also not gonna feel bad for how I move. It was a moment there, I was like, damn, I've grown, because normally I would be in explanation mode, fear mode, calling. Oh, and I have to mention, I did call him back at some point because I saw that he called me within like the last hour, so I was like, oh, you, um, I tried to call back courtesy because he was trying to call from like one until six. Not like mad times, like three times. Um, so, um, but like I said, I was into that show. And if you guys watch it, you'll see why. Like really, really see why. I don't have these problems with like Jeremy. I can go days without talking. I wouldn't never do it, but like I can go days and he would be like, oh, she's just me and her. I called this man from somebody's house last weekend. So I check seeing. <laughs> we like that um i let him know where i was at too because i don't play no games i'm either you're gonna be down for me as who i am 100 percent, or you're just not that's pretty much where i'm at right now i'm not gonna change myself ever again i'm not gonna walk on eggshells ever again <laughs> i'm not doing that shit anymore that's not gonna be a part of my life part of my existence i did it for so long so long and then my kids had to do it and i'm not doing that no more my battery is of course dying because why wouldn't it these things last 3.2 minutes now 3.2 minutes i'm about to change my battery i know i'm back and i was cold so we just rocking this hoodie now oh, i have my window open because i was using tea tree oil and i cannot remember for the life of me i know Dogs have it in their stuff, but I think the fumes or something is not healthy for them, so I opened my window because I used it. And now I'm freezing my ass off for my dog. Anyways, so I just was like, you know, I refuse to go through these things again. And I think that was just the universe being like, have you learned your lesson from the last time? Because this is how it exactly started for you the last time. And did you see where you ended up? So yeah i felt really good about it and um i don't know why there was a moment i was scared to do it but it just lets you know old habits die hard and it takes time to get over things and these are like little tests to show are you truly truly healed or not um and i'm not saying i'm 100 percent healed healing takes time but I know in some areas I'm more aware. I notice when I'm uncomfortable and ain't nobody about to do that to me. Ain't nobody about to make me uncomfortable. So, uh, DJ, it was nice getting to know you, but no. Okay. Um, what else? Y'all, like, the last month has been crazy. I've been so sick. And... Um, that's where my breast came in because it got infected. My nipple ring kept getting caught on everything. I don't know what was going on, but I had it over a year with no problems. And then all of a sudden it started getting caught on things and causing so much friction in the pool and it would do so. I was in so much pain. One day the pain was just so bad I could not do anything but rip it out like i was like, you know what? I'm taking it out. I didn't rip it. I did unscrew it properly and do everything, but I'm taking it out. Um, so I took it out and then the pain got worse and worse. Now I deal with it because I have other pain, you know, I got nerve damage, I got all kinds of shit that's just in my body, normal pain, whatever. That's why this tooth issue that I'm going to tell you about in a minute, all these things, I'm like, it's not unbearable yet, so I'm fine. 
so a month goes by after I take it out and it's still just not right so finally I decide I'm gonna go to the emergency room because my emergent my insurance was like everyone stopped taking it it was my cardiologist my neurologist and my PCM all stopped taking my insurance so I couldn't go anymore and um so I was like all I have is the emergency room um so I went to the emergency room and I would let them know like I need antibiotics this make sure it's just not this one and pinky swear <laughs> And so she's feeling is an orgy as two nurses. They're like bloop, bloop, on both sides to see like, hey, this one feels like this. This one still has a piercing in though. But it feels like this. This one feels like this. Oh, you know what? That one is hard. That one. Ma'am. Ma'am. I did tell you that. Okay. So she's like, okay, I'm going to prescribe you five days of antibiotics twice a day. Cool. Beans. Um, I go to pick up the antibiotics, everything. Five days goes by. I'm like, well, maybe, you know, it's still kicking in, doing its thing. It did not. So, um, a couple of days later, um, I'm like, I need to, no, I was like, it's still hard. It's still painful. It went down ever so slightly, but nothing else. So I get this, I order this thing like a wound it's called silver x i think from walmart it's a little tube it works wonders um so i just get it put it on my breast because i also caused myself a chemical burn on my boob because of um apple cider vinegar because i was trying to pull out the infection and i did not dilute it one of the times i was wondering why the hell it hurt so bad and the plumber was here fixing a leak in my house and <laughs> it was a mess so but like I said I'm using I'm used to so much pain that I didn't really register it as something's wrong I was just like that's weird that it's painful so I take it off and child not only does the both of my nipples have multiple piercing holes in them because I have pierced them over six times because I love it but there's a third nipple looking thing that I have because of a burn from my sauna the zipper touched me and it made a burn right there and now it looks like a third nipple and then now my nipple looks like chewed up bubblegum hamburger meat and it had a chemical burn <sighs> so I put that stuff over it that's why I bought the silver X because I was like not only am I dealing with an abscess on my nipple but I am dealing with a chemical burn at the same time it was excruciating pain <sighs> so um, I'm dealing with that. I put the stuff over it that same day. I use it one time for a couple hours. It bursts. The abscess burst. Pus blood every way. Like in the gauze. Because I put a gauze over it. I put that. It was the best thing ever. But the worst thing. It didn't have a smell or a stench to it. Because I did smell it. Because I know that it can be an indication of an infection so I was like let me smell it I made my daughter smell it like I ran to her she's in the bathroom and I was like oh my god because I was on my break when it happened I have such health anxiety no one can calm me down so I end up putting that on for days I go back I did a teledoc appointment on the 5th Teledoc's like that's an abscess sir i'm fully aware that's an abscess he's like you need to go to urgent care i can't do anything i was like you can give me antibiotics he's like no you need to go to urgent care they need to lance it okay so i go to the urgent care urgent care is like i can't do anything to due to the type of tissue it is i'm like well it burst earlier he was like no 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 that's good that's good that means that you know it's gonna come out so he's like over the next few days it's gonna be like leaking and things are gonna be coming out squeeze it in the shower while you have warm water but don't get crazy don't be like <laughs> but just like encourage it to leak i was like okay <clears throat> he gave me more antibiotics this time it's a Ciflexin, Ciflexin, um, three times a day, 500 milligrams for seven days. So I'm taking the antibiotics. This thing is draining all the time, and I'm just deathly ill at this point. 
leading up to this like all December I was sick then I had this tooth issue I had chipped it two months prior and didn't think anything of it because there wasn't any pain but eventually it started having pain I went to the dentist the dentist is like when do you feel the pain and he's like is it only when it's cold or when it's hot stuff on you and I was like yeah but there's times in between like it's like a electric shock I can tell it's nerves he's like uh. I was like yeah and he's like yeah he's a nigerian guy he's like he compliments me he boosts my ego every time i'm there like every time i need my ego boost i'm going to the dentist lord and the last time he was like this on my hands you know and i was like oh my god um but you know i've been inside kind of a little bit for since may i went out last weekend <laughs> It was a weekend, let me tell you. It was a weekend. It was a weekend. I should have stayed my ass at home and not had no Hennessy. But, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so, uh, he's like, you know, you're going to need a root canal. Which, I mean, I, my daughter's had a root canal. Like, everyone around me has had a root canal. So, I'm like, okay. You know, I'm having anxiety because in 2021 they gave me so many shots in my face it started spasming and now I have like my neurologist says it's like a, a form of Bell's palsy and so when I get stressed I my face still spasms you know so um I feel it every now and again because like before I go to the dentist it does it right here like I get really tensed up and like it's so it's like a form of Bell's palsy that I have so I got scared because all of that was triggered by having so many shots in my face and when my ex was living here I had that all the time and I didn't know it was being brought on by stress I just thought it was residual stuff but I noticed when he was gone I stopped having it and then like I talked to him one time I think it was last year in October we were talking about my son on the phone or maybe it was a year before in October I don't know years are getting weird now that he's been gone over a year I don't know fucking when but we got into it and I noticed that my face started doing the spasm thing while I'm talking to him on the phone that was the last big spasm I ever had it turns out that the position of the chip is what caused the problem because I had a chip over here since 2021 it was barely fixed two days ago barely fixed two days ago I was waiting for him to be like you need this tooth pulled out so the positioning of it is what caused the problem and the fact that I didn't come in right away so it cracked the whole top surface but also a piece of the bottom part you know leading to the root which it didn't look like that big of a piece but I guess in perspective of a tooth it is right so it started killing off the tooth once that crack happened and had I come in they would have been able to fix it it would have still been a root canal but it ended up that since it started dying off that I um, had to get it extracted so that day was a nightmare and a half I was calling Kimana because obviously between my mom and Kimana they have to hear all my medical nightmares and he was like hey this just took a lot because I was I went on the 22nd I had to come back on the 23rd where I went on the 21st and came back on the 22nd I can't remember what it was but either way it was two days together um so it was a Thursday and a Friday I believe it was like yeah this change I'm gonna send you up to this guy on the west side I go up there like they didn't give me any quotes I would have told them right straight up that I didn't have 4,000 because my house has cost me over 4,000 over the last I don't know how many months so <laughs> I was saying I could have told them right then and there if they would have ran the numbers that I was not gonna be able to do that but um they assured me everything was gonna be good 50% of it was gonna be taken care of and then I learned about what 50% they were covering so it ends up they covered a thousand dollars and I was responsible for four thousand um, dollars they only covered I think the implant rod itself so I ended up just going up there rude as fuck now I get it because I play devil's advocate I'm a Gemini I look at things from both sides 
I get it. It was the weekend before Christmas. The last day was Friday. Their last appointments, everything. But I was brought up there. The lady was extremely rude though. This was not a part of my plans. I was already like with my nerve exposed. And a, I could feel the nerve pain. So he stuck like lidocaine, novocaine sticks inside. So I could make it up there without being in excruciating pain. And um, I went up there and I ended up getting an extraction. So... I'm waiting for it to heal to come back down which is why I had my appointment this past Thursday which was like the 18th I think and I got my feelings done because now I'm bitches scared to sit on anything like the minute something looks like something take care of it please <sighs> um and to um tell them about this chip tooth because initially I came in for these two chip teeth that's why I came in but it turned out I had like other things I got a temp crown but like I said, it wasn't a root canal, it just was a crown. So I got fitted for my crown. I go back in like three weeks to get that placed on. So this temp feels fucking weird. <laughs> but, and then I got a cleaning and shit. But it was just a medical nightmare. I had been so sick that I was like passing out at work. Then as of last week, my sugar had dropped so bad that I was shaking like so, so bad and so dizzy and I had so much confusion. Like medically, I, over the last month, month and a half, I had been going through it, Lord. Uh, my, like, I don't know how we describe each other to each, because we're not together, but like, you know, I was getting scared for my kids because my new, for sure, Kimana had something dental that she needed to take care of. And so we had started talking about it. I'm like, now that I have this tooth extraction, like my daughter, I don't remember what she had. I think she needed a crown. You know, I need to make sure that she gets in, but like they don't be covering like a lot of stuff sometimes. So it ends up being like a thousand dollars and this and that. And between me paying out for the house and me paying out for everything else, like it just adds up. Like my savings is no longer saving because every time I build that bitch up, the house needs something, somebody needs something, you know? So it was, <sighs> it was stressing me out. I was like, oh my God, and telling him everything. He was like, yo, like we can get married. I can put them on my insurance, this, that, and the third. And you know he's been there for me like i don't tell him a lot of what's going on i don't really tell a lot of people what's going on in my life i kind of just like he'll be like what's good or he'll be like i feel like something's not good and are you okay and stuff like that and then i would just be like oh there's this but minimize the impact of what it's having on me and he was like you know he would just randomly send money to me for a wolf because he'd be like oh i know you had an appointment i know sometimes it's around x amount of dollars i'm just gonna go ahead and cover it for you so for wolf i accept it because it's my dog like it's for wolf you know what i mean i'll be tripping off of that and he calls him his son and he definitely holds the responsibility for him so i'm always grateful and thankful for that but i don't really expect anything from him like it's not like i'm like every time I don't ask him for nothing but he's always willing to help so that time he's like like if we get married we sat but there was just like something that gave me pause the whole time because they're older you know what I mean I don't know how that works would he have to adopt them like there was just a lot of questions in my mind about how I would go about it but I was about to move forward with it because it's like I want my kids covered I want them to have more coverage I want them to be taken care of so for me whatever I have to do to make sure they have coverage I will do. Mom's birthday rolled around and that morning um, Jeremy called me. He's the one that was like, you know, he's Wolf's dad. He's like, can I sleep with you? And he's in another state. He got PCS somewhere else. And I was like, yeah, and I was dead tired. And I was falling asleep, falling back to sleep because we just fell asleep on FaceTime or he would talk to Wolf on FaceTime. Like he literally talks to him. I'm trying to sleep but Wolf would like talk to him back he like when he used to be out here Wolf loved the shit out of this man like Wolf had a thing with feet which <clears throat> I think I triggered him earlier because I accidentally like he stepped right in front of me and then I stepped and I almost got him like I got him a little bit but he kind of 
not growl like he nor did back when my ex was here but like a little grumble and um then he looked at me like oh it's you you know so i think i triggered him a little bit you know because came out like he doesn't even do that no more like he's been chill since you know like um dad doesn't live here no more he's been like so and he has he hasn't gone after anybody he hasn't done anything like he's straight as fuck like my parents stomp right next to his head and he doesn't do nothing when they were out here they were like you guys are bugging you guys are bugging you guys are bugging and i was like damn maybe we are like are we good but we were just so used to him being on high alert that we were on high alert and then finally we just learned to relax because Kiwana was like since he's been gone haven't you noticed Wolf is more chill and I think it's also because he doesn't feel like my anxiety from the situation and he also doesn't feel like he has to protect me all the time because anyone that I've had in our space like they go through a thorough check <laughs> so um Jeremy he's been here and the principal he's been here so we don't have i don't really invite people over to my place like this right here like the kids like it when it's just us they like the life when it's just us and inviting new energy new male energy is just i don't see that for us and like i was kind of like i explained to my mom about the marriage to jeremy thing my mom me and my mom and my dad talked about it <laughs> And my dad was like, isn't that what you did in your first marriage? And I was like, yeah, but I'm older and wiser now. And like, we're just joking around. And I, I know like he's kind of, he would just worry that I would end up trying to be that perfect wife again and losing myself again, going through the motions again. He's very particular. And he was like, I want to pick out your next spouse because the last one, you know, whoop de whoop. And yeah so there was that then um so i kind of like talked to jeremy about it and i let him know like i think it's gonna end up being like a lot more trouble than it's worth in the end and i know your intentions are good because he didn't have to do that he didn't have to volunteer to help my kids he didn't have to worry about if they had dental coverage or how much was being covered or you know to kick in financially or he didn't have to do any of that you know what i mean and he's a like a such a standard person like such a standard person that i sometimes don't feel that i deserve it if i'm being 100 percent honest like i feel like I don't deserve somebody to treat me that well because basically I spent an entire time basically learning that I was not shit and so like having somebody that's always wanting to help or solve for me is crazy. He takes away a lot of like the stress of thinking for me a lot because I don't like picking out my clothes. I don't like, like for people that have to make decisions all the time, decision fatigue is like a, such a real thing. And I did it my whole marriage. I did it when I was a kid. Like I've always had to do it. So for me to vegetate and just not think and have somebody like kind of, it, it looks controlling probably to other people, but I welcome it because I just am like, I don't want to make that decision. Thinking about choosing clothes, it takes me too long because there's too many options. He picked out my clothes for a few days like he just picked out all my outfits for a few days and the stress that lifted off my brain just from that decision being gone was unreal just that one decision I was like oh my god like I'm really burnt out from making decisions I think all day at work because again like I said I moved apartments went from customer service to working with the retailers to now investigating and decisions have to be made once the investigation concludes and it's more decisions in my life where there's like leaks and things happening i have to make a decision right then and there like how i'm going to approach it when we have the leak in the house i was like listen we're gonna have to turn off the water temporarily a blessing is that we were in control of that that wasn't like it was getting shut off or anything like that it was us and i was like you know we're in control of stuff like that it's a blessing but it was a rough couple of days um like decision 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 all the time and i've always had to be that way i had to be the brains of the family and the operation constantly constantly and that's why like going into something i do have to make sure this person knows how to lead like properly lead not 
fake lead but like really really lead because there's gonna be times I don't want to think and I don't want to do stuff and I want you to be able to do it for me and you to be able to take the reins you to be able to hold that but also I also decided like I want to keep things very much separate in my life like this is our sacred place you know this is where they feel comfortable and don't have to worry about like all kinds of negative energies and stuff like that my daughter doesn't pull out her hair until like she gets a call from him like she does she yanks out her hair all the time i've pulled out my locks a lot dealing with them like it's just a lot of stuff that has changed so we're super like particular now who's allowed in our space Jeremy was over because he was like, you know, I worked tens at the time and we didn't have the same days off. I didn't have a weekend day off. I had like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or some shit. I think it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday because my friend had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And, um, and so he would come over because we wouldn't really see each other otherwise because I work 10 hours on the weekend. I not really into doing things on my days that I work I uh, like on Friday when I get off I'll do something that day but nothing on my work day so he would come over those days that I was at work and you know kick it with me and we would talk we would play music he would play the game when it was back here it's up in the front now um and he would be wanting to wake up Kimana so bad can I wake her up can she play the game with me <laughs> like oh, like you're like a child but um, I don't know his like biggest thing he reminds me a lot of my dad because he really really wants for them to be able to mm, trust in somebody a male figure in their life outside of my dad because obviously my son really really like for my dad his opinion surpassed his dad's opinion so he would be like like we were talking a long time ago about ear piercings and his dad was like yeah it's fine he's like i need to talk to grandpa grandpa said no and i was like well your dad said yeah and he was like no grandpa said no i'm not gonna do it and so you could tell in their younger life they were telling me things that like i wasn't listening to like Kimana when she was like six or seven she was like I want Grandpa Eddie and Grandpa Grandpa which she calls my dad Grandpa Grandpa um to walk me down the aisle she never mentioned her dad like she never mentioned his name nothing and I'm like okay well it's your wedding I want you to be happy I want you to do these things when my grandpa passed away in 2015 she cried like who's gonna walk me down the aisle it's just gonna be grandpa now my grandpa grandpa and i was like well i have his ashes on a pendant and he can still walk you down the aisle you know and he will still be there you know and so they told me things like she flushed my wedding rings down the toilet when she was two which is why i only like use costume jewelry costume jewelry from that point forward because like um why did the lighting change or something weird and like it's like kind of sepia um but like they told me stuff without telling me stuff before you know they valued pretty much my my grandpa and their grandpa grandpa so i look back at stuff and i was like there were just all these clues that i just was like ignoring I guess because in my mind I had to make everything work I had to make it work I had to do I had to be perfect I had to do this I had to do you know what I mean and I'm glad I let go of that ideology of things because it was a lot of stress on me because I could never do anything right so now whatever I fuck up it's me whatever I do is me like this shit's on me but it was on me before but in my head somehow like it wasn't but everything did boil down to how I would make sure things would fix run whatever I had to navigate the decisions and it was just a one person show when it came to that type of stuff and I realized in my life like 
the only thing holding me back is me but I allowed for so long for somebody to control that part of me and it kind of made it feel like a disability of some sort because I felt like I couldn't do things I wasn't allowed to do things and when I look at myself like my job I just hit my two years at my job but I promoted twice in that two years you know what I mean but the one that I stayed there a long time because I like the four tens no other department really offers that so it's like I want to go back to that department because of the four tens but um my my supervisor she still talks to me like she chats with me and she like a couple days ago was like we sure do miss you over here you know I'm like I'm still here and I do pop up over on their chat you know because to talk to them and everybody's like we miss you you know and it's nice to know that you leave a positive impact I remember speaking to a supervisor and they were talking about a award that was given to me that I had like a few times and they were like everyone in that room has something positive to say about you and their interaction with you like she was like basically in tears telling me that when I was trying to promote to a different position and they spent four hours with me asking me every type of question in order to get me prepared for this unfortunately because of some switching around in the company that position closed until they were able to get the agents where they needed them to be and so sometime early this year because even my supervisor supervisor was like hey make sure to keeping a lookout because I am keeping this position for you so like people up there think about me like who the fuck am I but like one of our meetings we had for our site because we don't have an actual office and my supervisor's supervisor sent me a private message and was like I better see you there because I didn't get to see you the last time and I was like oh my god like it's stressful <laughs> but it's actually cool that you know people want to see me and be around me and like at least I can leave like a positive feeling even when I'm going through stuff like they have no idea what's going on in my personal life but like to leave an impact on people is just a beautiful thing you know um I realize in life like all I want to do is be me and I don't want anybody to come in and try to change the essence of who I am as a person ever again I don't ever want to be somebody that I'm not ever again if I don't want to cook 45 days in a row I'm not doing it like I'm just not I'm simply not gonna be who I wasn't even though like I cook all the time but I'm tired there's days I'm tired okay I'm very tired <laughs> but I also don't like eating out because it doesn't feel very well in the end like it's bleh. but um yeah I just want to be who I am like my silly goofy self I want to be that all the time I want somebody that feeds into that energy and then we could be silly and goofy and all that shit together like I just know what I want in life on to the next thing like I have to say I don't know how much I should say but I'm proud uh, I'm proud of my daughter she's showing me like so much about herself and I've just been watching her grow as a person and she just makes me proud on a daily basis like seeing her in school I did honestly didn't feel like she wanted to go to school which not it's not for everybody and honestly you end up with big debts I want to say a huge like <sighs> thank you to the universe for even bringing us to where we are at right now because financially there's so many perks to being here like they can go to school for free and it's not had nothing to do with none of his veteran benefits because he's gonna be like I gave them a vehicle I gave them a vehicle had nothing to do with that at all it was under an initiative so they're able to go to school for free out here you know at their university no less so like that's a blessing that they can leave a school with a bachelor's degree I don't know if you get to go all the way to master's but you can leave the school with a bachelor's degree at the very least for free
free with no debt like i because i preach to them preach 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 to them like i don't want you guys to get into debt i don't want this i don't want that like I preach, 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 preach. from they were little like <laughs> to the point where it sounded like Kimono was stressed out by the time she got older because she's like I don't want that <laughs> oh my god but I was just like I don't want you starting off life with like I have medical bills from being out here I don't want that for them which is what I tried to explain to their dad like I just don't want them to start off life already at a disadvantage like I don't want that so um yeah it's just it's it's crazy just to think you know like even though there's so many things i dislike about living out here there have been such cool things about living out here as well i would have problems with my home like trust me every month or every other week there's something happening here but i was able to get a house in three weeks and i say i because i did all the paperwork i did all the research i did everything okay so i was able to get a house in three weeks when i moved out here um like it's it's just a lot of shit we were looking at houses in another like name like another city i'm not gonna name the city but we were looking at houses in another city we were finding like really good prices on the homes and everything with the type of concept that i want but it's stupid of me to move right now where the rates are where they are excuse me when i'm locked into such a good rate that people are not getting right now so we're just gonna park it we had like a family meeting about it we're just gonna park it we're just gonna stay and see where the rates go and what we can do next as far as you know moving and everything because i definitely don't want to die here but right now this is where it's at and i just told him like <laughs> this will be base this gives us the ability to travel and go out and do things so be it like you know we went to our first NBA game like if I was in California I would not be able to do that I would not be able to go to the NBA game I wouldn't have been able to have the seats that I had like no way but um mm -hmm, it's good you know things are hard at times I'm okay with that like sometimes I'm not because I do have mental breakdowns <laughs> last year was just really really hard because what made it hard wasn't the stuff that was always going on in the house like one two of them were hard um one was the what was it the water heater but that's when i learned that i had cold utakari i think it's called and where i break out when i'm really really cold and, and get itchy i get hives all over my body so that's where i learned that when the water heater went out which um and then it was the ac because like we ended up losing one of our pets due to overheating and stuff and that bummed me the fuck out like to no end and you know we had to deal with the loss like towards the end of the year one of our other pets of the previous year like it just a lot of stuff you know and so things can be replaced and all that shit but the little lives they can't be and so that's the devastating part and you guys know how I am about my animals. Like, I am obsessed with my animals. So, for me, like, I have OCD a lot when it comes to their health, too. So, it's just health in general, I guess, I have, you know, OCD for. Because, like, anytime, even if I, like, fuck and I use a condom or whatever, I still have OCD afterwards. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just have OCD. <laughs> but... Yeah, I guess that's all that's been going on in life right now. Um, my son, he is, I think, in his second or third year of school right now. The third year, fuck. It's just crazy. It's so crazy. He works like, he does a lot of amazing things. Like, his brain is, I, I kind of liken him to Sheldon on Big Bang Theory. He has an eidactic memory where he can learn through just memorization and shit like i wish but obviously see i'm not gonna retain it i'm just gonna know like recall it but that is helpful in a lot of ways i can't even remember what i have for breakfast you know 
Um, but I'm about to head out. Hopefully this video makes it up. I do want to try to be more consistent because I do want to like not have to give you like big jumps like this. Like from January of last year to January of this year. This is what happened. Um, but yeah, I was totally like drunk this weekend. I had a good time. Um, it was it was a really nice time. The weekend before that, I hung out with a guy. He's a veteran too. <laughs> Um, he did fighter planes. He said he shot down fighter plane, fighter planes. I don't know what the exact title of that is, but um, it sounds like there's probably some PTSD involved in that. He had a little bit of a tremor, I noticed, um, and stuff. But he was nice, but he was too shy, so I can't see him anymore because I can't waste my time trying to pull teeth to get you to talk. Like I just can't. The Henny did a lot of talking for me though. So. <laughs> <Obviously>. <laughs> but um yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, my daughter's gonna be going out today. She has a date and hopefully everything goes well. The first date went well. She went on Friday or yeah, Friday. And that's when I was like, Lady like a titty, okay. <laughs> I just be waiting for the weekend boy. <laughs> Um, I finally finished that bottle of Hennessy that my ex got me for like five, six months ago when I went to the ER with him. So I had that and I think Kimana just finished her. Did I have him give me a Casamigos too? I think I did, yeah. So we both finished our bottles this month. So five months a bottle. I have one from a guy that I I wonder if that's a husky. Um, a guy that I met, like we talked for like two or three days and we met up and everything. I kept putting it off because I was on my period. It was last month. And um, finally I just decided to meet up with him and he brought me a cigar and a big bottle of Henny Black. So I got that still here. It has a little green bow. It's so cute. And, um... And the guy that I hung out with, Thomas, he bought me Hennessy. It was the regular Hennessy. Um, I feel like that hits me so much harder, like so hard. Like that gets like the juices flowing. Like I don't need to be drinking that. <laughs> the goal, the plan, everything is to be more consistent. I do want to like go back to mental health Mondays and stuff. And like I want to just get back on track with my life because it's gonna like when I look back at my old vlogs 2021 because I kind of skipped 2022 um <sighs> I have so much that I remember about that time and like what I was going through and it was a part of my you know getting to the point where I am growth healing all that good stuff so I want to be able to look back at my life when I have Alzheimer's and be like, wow, bitch, you finally healed. <laughs> you finally did it, Joe. You did it, Joe. So I want to be there. I want to be healed. I want to be happy. And I want to do it by myself, like on my own. All by myself. I want to be. <laughs> yeah, I want to do it. Like, so. But I can see. The growth I could see the changes so even if this doesn't seem like a lot to somebody it's a lot to me oh another thing I had to cut my thought had to cut my father off because he has not changed what are they saying a tiger doesn't change its stripes I don't know something right um, but he's the same person that he was when he was with my mother and you know I spoke to his wife yeah that just let me know i can't associate with somebody that's gonna be like that like i can't deal with them so i in my head made peace with the fact that he did and it sounds mean and it sounds fucked up but 
I just can't keep certain energy around me so I went ahead and blocked them and I just call it a day like I can't fake the funk with somebody I don't care if you're linked to me genetically if you are not shit you're just not shit like it doesn't change the fact that we share the same blood same share share the same DNA you just ain't shit period like it doesn't matter um, I'm close to his wife and my mom actually like you know gave her some advice they are gonna speak on the phone like I just feel like you know thing everything happens for a reason everything happens for a reason and I just feel like us three linking because I have you know things that I had not known were real memories of him I thought they were nightmares that I just made up about him my mom's like no that is very much a real memory that really happened because I was like oh you know I kept having the same nightmare about him and she's like no that was real and I was like that made him even more scary to find out that, that really really happened like that made it even more scary so I'm about to go um, I was all over the place but I just felt like I haven't talked to you guys in like 110 days or something which is like the last time I posted in October and I was trying to give you guys like everything at once we gonna have us like a sip in time and talk and chill and vibe maybe next weekend excuse me and then we're gonna try to get this schedule going i need to buy another sd card oh my god i have indigestion all of a sudden you see my tinge tinge teenage ninja turtles oh my um what color is he that's Raphael, right Oh, that's Raphael. I think that's Donatello. Is that Raphael? I can't even remember anymore. Oh, wait. Okay, that's Raphael. That's Michael. Angelo. That's Leonardo. Yeah, that is Donatello, I think. Yeah. Nope, I mixed it up again. Okay, purple is Donatello. <laughs> that's um, Hennessy's middle name. Hennessy Donatello. But he my last name. <sighs> so, I used to know them by heart, too. But, yeah. So... I got me a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cup at Dollar Tree. I love this thing. And I have to drink cups out of, like, different, like, my Phoenix, this one. Expensive ass cup. <laughs> it is for water. This is for juices. This has, like, a water pack, like the Skittles version. The other Phoenix one, it's over there. That's for my coffee. <clears throat> so I have a specific cup for everything um I can do alkaline water where I put my lime in my phoenix cup but I really don't like to so I have this other cup that is like a handle one too and my Lakers cup because I have two phoenix cups and one maker cup my mom got me the Lakers cup and um I just use those for water and yeah, so I have to drink a lot of different things. I don't know what that is, but that's just me. Oh, my Heather batteries are done. But anyways, that's it, folks. I really enjoyed talking to you. I missed you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Dame un beso.